Democrat. Again, following those trends of what we've studied and what we've researched, that's what you find. A pro-life male from South Carolina. Republican. Okay? Again, because if you look again, uh, you know, gender-based on that one and region, that's kind of what you get into. An African-American banker from Atlanta. Democrat. A Baptist banker living in the suburbs. Republican. Again, you kind of find your region and religion on that one. Uh, a married couple, I'm sorry, Jewish female living in San Francisco, California. Democrat. Married couple, Protestant homeowners that regularly attend church. Republican. The growing number of newcomers from other countries strengthens American society. The statement, is that a Democratic or a Republican statement? Democratic. Uh, stricter environmental laws and regulations cost too many jobs and hurt the economy. Republican. Republican. The government cannot afford to do much more to help the needy. Republican. Homosexuality should be more accepted in our society. Gun control is needed to make our country safe. If prayer would be allowed back in public schools, our society would be a better place. Republican. All right. So very easy to understand the different demographics that kind of come along with that. It's not real difficult to get that. So let's look again at these factors right here. These factors right here are what drive us when it comes to our political social, uh, socialization. This is what drives us to think the way we think and to vote the way that we vote. And oftentimes why we don't vote. But it all starts with family. Family is the number one factor that drives us when it comes to our voter profile and our voter activity. Why is it family? Somebody tell me why is it family that is the most important factor? Closer to them. You grew up around them. What else? You do it, you vote the way your parents typically vote. And that's a lot of the factors that come along with it. Because that is what we've been predisposed to. I mean, this is the information that we get. We hear the conversations. We listen to the complaints. We know about you know, what their opinions are on A, B, C, and D. And those things become a driving force in us because, well, it's just the foundation for which we base our lives off of. You know, these parents, this family, this structure has developed us, it's raised us, it's provided for us in most cases, and so because of that, that's the information that we rely on to believe that this is what we think, this is the way that we feel. But you have to look at it from a perspective of understanding that we have to be individual, individualistic in our approach as well. Yes, that has to be a factor within the way we think, but how do we think? What do we believe? And that becomes the, the real factor behind this. I've always told my kids this. Anytime we start government, I've always said one statement to them. I said, most people don't get involved with politics, and most people don't vote because they don't believe their vote matters. But if you think in the real terms, the real concept about how this thing affects us, if you think about the natural term of a congressman and how long they're in office, let's say a first-term congressman is up for election when you get to vote at 18 years old, and you choose not to vote. In most cases, that congressman will stay in office through the lifetime of you, your child, and your child's child. So your grandchildren will be affected by that person. Why do we vote? We vote for people because we understand the long-reaching impact that it will have on our lives. Not just our lives, but our children and even our grandchildren because of the span by which most of these people sit in office. That's why we get actively involved in politics. That's why we vote. That's why we make choices because these are the people who are going to determine my child's education, my child's future when it comes to owning a home when it comes to the types of laws and regulations that this nation will you know, basically guide and construct their lives around. And in terms of me, I think of it from my perspective is that I vote not for myself, but for my child and for her child one day. That's what I vote for. And that's why we look at politics. And that's why voter turnout being so low is such a bad thing in our society is because it really is affecting us long term. I mean, you think about Senator Robert Byrd was 96 years old and still in office. 96. All right, that's... That's, that's not young anymore. I mean, he's been there a very long time. He had a full career before that. But that's what's happening. They're spending 20, 30 years in office. And so it has a much longer reaching effect than the immediate saying, well, I don't want to vote because my vote doesn't matter. The second thing we look at is peers, the people around us, those influences. Think about this. When you end up in a class like this, oftentimes you have people who have strong viewpoints. And maybe those viewpoints don't really matter, or maybe they do. Maybe you have a conversation about this, or maybe you have a conversation about that. You see a situation like at Parkland, Florida. You see situations that happen within you know, the framework of our nation and outside of our nation. And all of these different things happen. You think to yourself and you ask the question, why? Why is this happening? 
what can we do to change it? And that why and that what become a driving factor in the way that we think and the way that we'll eventually vote. I mean, honestly, when you think in terms of our peers, what do you think the number one, if that's a good way to say it, the number one outlet is when it comes to our peers that influences the way that we think and the way that we vote? Social media. I mean, most people, if you do the research, most people in the last election gained the majority of their information not from watching a political debate, not from researching and studying on their own, not even reading a newspaper. They got it from Facebook. That's where they got their news from. That's what they bought into. And that's why the social media platform has become such a big aspect when it comes to election process. Because they realize that most people don't watch the nightly news anymore. Most people don't read the newspaper. What they're doing is they're logging on and they're catching that little snippet that comes along that says, President Trump did, did this. Or in the case of Hillary Clinton, did this if you go back to the election. And that became the basis for our knowledge to say, I'm not voting for him, I'm not voting for her because of what I read on Facebook. What I saw on Twitter. And that, that's our framework. But these are our peers. Why? Because we choose to follow these people. We choose to connect with these people. We allow them to invest into our lives, and so that investment becomes a part of the cornerstone for which we're going to base our future decisions in the political spectrum. So our peers have a massive effect on education, where you choose to go to school, where you guys are going to choose to go to college, will have an effect on your political mindset. It will have an effect on your political activism or your political restraint and how you are involved or not involved. And so. Wherever you choose to go to school, that will have an effect on you. Religion, like you saw in the demographics of what we saw. The more religious you are, typically people tend to be more conservative because a lot of these liberal ideas tend to conflict with a conservative mind, I mean, with a religious mindset in most cases. And that's, again, statistically proven by what we see. Region, area what you grow up in. You can grow up in Alabama, and, you know, the, one of the big things that I always talk about is the Solid South, how for years... You know, the, Alabama was a democratic state. You could count on them being democratic no matter what. But eventually, because of civil rights movement and voting rights acts, you begin to see a change in society's approach to it. And many Southerners no longer identified with the Democratic Party because they became sympathizers to, of course, minorities within the South and the voting rights movement. And so, civil rights movement. And so you saw a change in that. And the Solid South began to move more Republican to traditional conservative values that, again, could allow them to hold on to what used to be. And so that's why region is such a big part of it. Age. 26 amendments passed, given 18-year-olds the right to vote. But if you go and look at the research today, the lowest voting demographic that we have is 18 to 24-year-olds. That's the lowest voting demographic. The highest is 45 and older. Age is a big difference maker when it comes to voting. Okay? They understand that at this stage in my life, I need politicians in place who are going to protect me when it comes to my retirement, my Social Security, my investments, my family, my future. It becomes a much, more, a much different approach to the longevity that I'm looking for rather than the what's happening right now. Last is gender. Uh, of course, gender plays a role in it because male versus female. And, of course, uh, in our society today, when you get into a um, mindset of transgender and, and where do we connect and where do we fit in with society, all of this is going to play a part in to the political spectrum. And people will make their decisions of whether to vote or not to vote based on these seven factors most of the time. What is it that drives us? What is it that pushes us the way that we do? So that's what we look at with these factors. Very important to remember this because a lot of times on the AP exam you'll find this as being a cornerstone of what we're looking at to uh, voter profiles. All right, let's look at the next thing. Uh, go ahead and flip over to that next page, the one where the portrait was elected in 2016, 2012, and 2008. What you're going to do, you're going to work your group on this one again. And the questions at the bottom, number one and two, you're going to answer these two questions based on the information that you have right here. So again, you guys need to read through this information, kind of get an understanding of what it's talking about, what it's dealing with, and then answer questions one and two. We'll come back in about 10 minutes, and we'll address these questions. Okay?